While searching for the world's most expensive items, we uncovered some of the priciest smells that are prized across the globe. From frankincense and myrrh to agarwood, jasmine oil to sandalwood, join us as we revisit what makes these scents so expensive. First, we're heading to the rainforest of Southeast Asia to see why infected agarwood can sell for as much as $100,000 per kilogram. For thousands of years, agarwood has been known as the wood of the gods. First grade agarwood can cost as much as $100,000 per kilogram, making it one of the most expensive raw materials in the world. But for this tree to produce any agarwood, it must first become infected with mold. So how does this infection process work? What is agarwood used for? And what makes it so valuable? Aquilaria malacensis is a tree native to the rainforests of Southeast Asia. Prior to infection, the healthy heartwood inside Aquilaria trees is pale, odorless and worthless. However, in the wild, damage to the tree by external forces, such as grazing animals, sporadically results in the growth of a specific type of fungal infection inside the tree, called Phylophora parasitica. The Aquilaria's defense to this attack is to produce a stress-induced aromatic resin, called aloes, which is dark and moist. Over the course of several years, the aloes slowly embed into the heartwood to create a garwood. With the experience of people who go to the forest, thì thường thường người ta đến cái cây đó người ta nhìn vào người ta có thể đoán được là cái cái, cái con kiến nó đục vào cái lỗ đấy rồi khi nó đục vào là nó gây cái vết thương là cái nó trú ngụ ra vào rồi nó đem những cái vi sinh vật hoặc cái vi khuẩn hay các bào tử nấm ở các nơi nó đem vào thì cái cây đó cái con kiến nó ở trong con kiến nó có chất một cái chất dịch ở trong con kiến nó tiết ra nó làm cho cái vết thương nó tổn thương thì cái gió nó mới đưa nhựa nó bao lại lâu ngày nó xanh trở once agarwood is harvested, it needs to be separated from the healthy aquilaria wood around it. In a painstaking task that often takes hours, resin-infused chips, also known as oud, are carved out by hand. Oud chips are commonly used as incense, particularly in the Middle East, where they're burnt both as tokens of hospitality and infused into clothes and garments as a perfume. Khi đốt lên đầu tiên là mình thấy cái khói nó lên trước, rồi quá cái mùi hương thơm nó tỏa ra thương thơm nó tỏa ra cái mùi rất là thơm đặc trưng của trầm hương không có cái hương nào bằng nó hết rồi sau đó nó mới từ từ nó có cái mùi ngọt dịu lại mà nó kéo dài có thể là 5-3 tiếng đồng hồ nếu trong phòng kín. Oud is also distilled into an essential oil and in its purest form, aged oud oil can cost up to $80,000 per liter earning the nickname amongst traders of liquid gold. As its popularity continues to grow in the West Oud has become a common ingredient in several high-value fragrances, adding a warm, musky aroma. But due to unsustainable production and poaching, all varieties of Aquilaria trees are now classified as critically endangered, with experts estimating the global population has declined by 80% over the last 150 years. Even for those surviving Aquilaria trees, the frequency of natural fungal infection is extremely low. Some estimates say only 2% of wild aquilaria trees are adequately infected to produce agarwood naturally, meaning the hunt to find natural agarwood is extremely arduous. Rồi cái tốt đấy chẳng hạn 5 người, 10 người đi có thể là đi 10, 15, 20 ngày nhưng mà khi mà có trầm ngày nào sớm ngày nào thì về ngày đấy thôi. Có khi đi thì cũng chẳng có đâu. Có khi đi cả mười mấy hai mươi hôm về cũng chẳng có gì hết. Rất là nguy hiểm. Nào là à, mưa gió chứ là đèo núi rồi rồi thú rừng rắn rết đủ thứ nên nghe bỏ mạng là trong rừng là chuyện thường thôi cái thời đó là bỏ mạng là chuyện thường bây giờ không còn trầm nữa hết rồi bây giờ trong rừng là không còn trầm tức là cái dân mình đã khai thác ra tận tận hết rồi không còn nữa. With natural agarwood now bordering on extinction, in some forestries like this one managed by Truong in Vietnam, trees are artificially inoculated with a microbial compound to induce the all important resin. Trầm tự nhiên thì dân gian mình thường nói là là nó trong trong thiên nhiên nó nó hiếm nó khó nên là họ chuộng như sự thực á nếu mà nói về cái chất lượng trầm nhân tạo với trầm thiên nhiên thì bây giờ chưa chắc trầm nhân tạo đã thua trầm thiên nhiên. 
đúng trầm mà tự nhiên bây giờ giá trị của nó rất là cao chẳng hạn như nó có thể gấp 100 lần cái trầm nhân tạo vì cái trầm tự nhiên đó, là bây giờ nó không còn nữa nên người ta có muốn đưa cái giá nào vẫn được còn cái trầm nhân tạo là là dân gian người ta biết là là cái này làm từ con người mà ra nên từ đánh cái giá nó thấp xuống a garwood was described as a fragrant product of wealth and luxury in one of the world's oldest written texts the sanskrit vedas dating back as early as 1400 bc the aroma produced from agarwood has been highly valued by many cultures and religions throughout history. In the Nirvana Sutra, aloes is mentioned as a heavenly wood used in the cremation of Buddha. In the New Testament, Jesus' body was anointed with a mixture of myrrh and aloes following his crucifixion. And in the Sahih al-Bukhari Hadith, the description of paradise by Allah's messenger includes the burning of agarwood as incense. The global market for agarwood is estimated to be worth a staggering $32 billion. But where oud was once so common, high demand has not only increased the price, but also the rate of harvesting and artificial production. By the end of 2029, the market is expected to double to $64 billion. Theo tôi cái kinh nghiệm lâu năm thì cái trầm hương này không có mai một đâu. Trầm hương sau này nó là một cái 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 vật sản quý giá cho đất nước đấy. Vì cái này là nguồn cung có khi không đủ cầu đâu. Vì tất cả các thế giới này trên thế giới bây giờ hầu như họ tập trung vào vào cái ngành trầm hương hết. Từ thượng vàng hạ cám chẳng hạn như là tinh dầu đến trầm rồi đến hương, hương nhang đấy, rồi thì là tiện chuối hạt đeo tay, thì là vòng đeo cổ đấy nó không có mai một đâu nhưng mà con cái là bây giờ trước tiên sợ dân mình không có vốn để đầu tư thôi. Frankincense and myrrh are perhaps best known for their biblical connotations. But this tree sap has been prized across the world for over 6,000 years. These fragrant incense pieces come from the Bursaraceae family of trees and are found across the Horn of Africa and the Arabian Peninsula. But despite recent attempts to protect these trees, they could soon be headed for extinction. So what makes frankincense and myrrh so expensive? There are roughly 550 species of Bursaraceae, a collection of trees often referred to as the incense tree family, recognizable for their flaking aromatic bark and fragrant sap. But true frankincense comes from only a small fraction of those species. Frankincense is a milky white resin derived from Boswellia trees, which are remarkable for their ability to grow in unforgiving conditions. In fact, these trees have been known to grow out of solid rock. Myrrh, on the other hand, is a reddish resin extracted from Comifora trees. The process of extracting sap from Boswellia and Comifora trees is virtually identical. Incisions or taps are made in the bark of the tree, which create injury. The trees produce a gummy resin, like a scab, as a protection against the injury. The resin then hardens into teardrop pieces. More incisions are made at important intervals to continue the production of resin exudates. <laughs> The resin granules collected from the trees must be separated into different grades. First grade A frankincense is clear, white and without impurities. Smaller pieces of the same high quality granules are separated within a sieve and classified as first grade B frankincense. The grades gradually deteriorate based on the size and the amount of impurities, such as bark infused into the resin. Low quality frankincense is mainly sold for local market consumption, whereas grades 1, 2, 3 and 4 are exported. <laughs> The 
ከበ 15 ሺህ ነው ገጽ እዚ 15 ሺህ አርሺ ሸምንተም ኢትን 15 ሺህ ሸምንተም ኢትም ዘይባቱ ነው ገጽ እዚ አድ ማለት That means that at wholesale this sack of first grade A Ethiopian frankincense is worth about $430 Frankincense and myrrh have been burnt as incense for thousands of years, and both are deeply ingrained in religious ceremonial burnings. In fact, it's estimated that the Roman Catholic Church alone still uses an estimated 50 metric tons of frankincense a year. Frankincense and myrrh were some of the most highly prized commodities in ancient civilizations, and became the driving force behind the creation of the incense trade routes. a vast network of major land and sea passageways dating back to 300 BC that linked the Mediterranean to luxury goods from the south at the height of their use these routes allowed the transport of approximately 3000 tons of incense every year hauled by camels today alongside its medicinal and cosmetic uses frankincense has found a surge in popularity as an essential oil which in its purest form can be sold for as much as $6000 per liter Frankincense essential oil alone generated more than 190 million dollars in 2018 and that's expected to exceed 406 million by 2028. But with so much money to be made from damaging a tree, the tapping process, which should happen only two or three times a year, is under threat not only from environmental dangers such as wildfires, but also from local untrained tappers. It can sometimes take decades for these trees to start producing resin. So the sustainability of the species relies on injuring the tree without killing it. Unfortunately, the harvesting process uh, of uh, frankincense is very damaging to the tree. So every time people go there and make wounds and then collect the, the sap, uh, that doesn't give enough time to rest for for the tree and heal itself. So one of our findings is this tree is uh, really under a threat. The International Union for Conservation of Nature categorized the Boswellia sacra species as near threatened over 20 years ago and the lack of overharvesting laws in some countries means that protecting Boswellia trees in such remote areas is virtually impossible experts who surveyed aging Boswellia papyrifera trees in North Africa suggested that most hadn't produced a young tree in half a century بزاف فقد تلوح صالح كاين كاغل او حمشا 10 عامات كود او دخل تخلي تطفق عاد دخل تخلي افليس كاون كنت كود يدخل تخيل كاون قريت كاون كنت قود يتخيل بتفطروا بعنا على زخي تخلص هنا تحرع ويتلقى عزلي تناي محدر وانت ما ناي مانجمنت ناي وانت تطعم كان لقن نبزح زمانات كتقم نزمانات ناتي تقم على المزع تاني اسكا حاجه كل زول قال لك عط اني رونت في اخاوي تاعك على هذنا ورع اخاوي توصيلنا هذنا تم بين كاو توصيلنا This is one of the most expensive woods in the world but it's really one portion of a sandalwood log that makes it so valuable. To get to it, these men tirelessly chop away the lighter outer layer of sapwood until they're left with this, the dark inner core that makes a kilogram of Indian sandalwood cost $200 today. This is where sandalwood's unique fragrance comes from, and when it's distilled, it's used in all kinds of products, from bath soaps to luxury brand perfumes. So what makes sandalwood's aroma so special? And is that why the wood is so expensive? Native to South India, Santalum album or Indian sandalwood was used for hundreds of years before becoming a go-to scent for expensive perfumes. It's also been used for wood carvings and medicine, and it's even considered a sacred tree in several religions. Once distilled, sandalwood's sweet woodsy aroma retains its scent for decades. This is the crude oil portion. This we take separately and uh, it is weighed and uh, it is handed over to stores department. After harvesting, the forestry department sells sandalwood at auction to factories like this one in Mysore. This is a uh, Jethpokal class of uh, sandalwood. Uh, We have received from uh, Marayur in uh, Kerala. This uh, we are going to process uh, in next week. Hollow hardwood logs are classified as Jej Pokal, one of the 18 classes of Indian sandalwood. Factories can purchase pure hardwood like Jej Pokal or raw sandalwood logs. But if they buy the raw wood, they'll need to break down each log themselves. Although a machine helps split sandalwood into more manageable pieces, Stripping the logs down to their hardwood core requires the effort of several employees. 
it is totally manual process and a very skilled process in a physically demanding process these men chop each log to remove the sapwood the non-fragrant portion of sandalwood you can see the brown portion this is uh, hardwood the outer portion uh, is called uh, sapwood and the exterior portion is bark pure hardwood is the most valuable class of sandalwood in some trees, pure heartwood is easier to extract because it forms in one circle at the center. In other trees, the heartwood mixes together with sapwood, which impacts the final value of the oil. This brown portion is heartwood and uh, this uh, white portion is sapwood. So, so it is mix of both heartwood uh, and uh, sapwood. That's why it is called mixed wood. So it is a little bit uh, inferior quality as regard to sandalwood oil contents. After employees have gathered all they can, a machine breaks down the strips of wood into chips. Employees do a sift through these chips to grab any leftover pieces of usable heartwood. Then a separate machine turns those chips into powder. Now, distillation can begin. The process is long, and it starts with injecting steam into distillation stills. After the oil is extracted, all that's left are these giant mounds of powder. But even with most of the oil gone, some of the scent still lingers. Rather than going to waste, it's used to make incense sticks and dupe, a common form of incense in India used during religious rituals. During the final stages, workers separate the oil from water and purify it until they're left with a totally clean tank of sandalwood oil. It takes Mahadeva's team about a week to distill one metric ton of oil. Tanks of the purified oil are sent to a lab in Bengaluru. Here, researchers test each batch for quality. They smell samples of the oil to confirm the aroma is consistent across batches. Sandalwood's unique and long-lasting scent makes it compatible with a wide range of other fragrances, which is why it's an ideal base for perfume. So sandalwood oil is a woody compound. It is a base compound. It uh, lasts around uh, more than 24 hours. It is not like that, that orange oil or uh, jasmine like. After the oil is tested, it heads to another factory where it will be used to make soap for Karnataka Soap and Detergents Limited, or KSDL. Okay, this is the final finished uh, oil. It's the color of the oil, uh, that uh, finished product, perfume, what we are using for uh, Mysore Sandal Soap fragrance. KSDL is one of the biggest producers of sandalwood oil products globally. Although its primary focus is soap, the company sells bottles of just sandalwood oil too. One 10 gram bottle of sandalwood oil costs 5,500 rupees, or about $74. <laughs> it is very expensive. For the common people like uh, uh, me and you, uh, cannot afford to pay 3,000 rupees for a 5 gram of sand oil. In every uh, auction, uh, there used to be increase in the price of sandalwood, uh, maybe by 10%, 20% uh, increase compared to previous prices. So when the sandalwood uh, price increases, uh, definitely oil prices will also be increased. Compared to 2017, a kilogram of Indian sandalwood oil can cost double today. And demand isn't slowing down with the market expected to reach over $165 million by 2027. Out of roughly 10 sandalwood species, Indian sandalwood and Australian sandalwood have the largest commercial value. The difference is the Indian species has higher levels of alpha and beta santalol, the components in sandalwood responsible for its lasting scent and believed health benefits. India used to dominate the market for sandalwood oil and oil-based products. But in recent years, Australia, which grows both the Indian and Australian sandalwood species, has gained significant ground in the market. Although this might look like a lot of sandalwood, India is actually facing a supply shortage. In fact, the supply is so limited that this sandalwood distillery only operated for about four months in 2021. And up until 2002, it was illegal for private growers to plant sandalwood trees in the southern states of Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, and Kerala. With only a small amount of government-sanctioned replanting alongside the over-harvesting, India's supplies suffered. And since 2018, the species has been considered vulnerable, one level above endangered. 
Another factor that limits supply and increases the price is inherent to the way the tree grows. Older trees tend to yield more oil, which makes them preferable for oil production. Growers will typically wait around 20 years for a tree to mature. This waiting period doesn't only limit the quantity of sandalwood, it also puts the trees at risk. It's not uh, the seasonal crop. Uh, it is a long-lasting uh, crop. It needs uh, very patience to grow and uh, you need to protect till its maturity. That is the one uh, issue you have to bear in mind. Today, every tree has to be registered with the government and can't be harvested or transported without permission. But even these strict regulations aren't enough to prevent theft. According to Hinduism Today, roughly 2,000 tons of smuggled sandalwood passed through the black market in 2018. To successfully grow the trees for decades, farmers must pay the cost to protect them. Here in the city of Mysore, some trees are wrapped in barbed wire. On top of this threat, harvesting these trees isn't simple. When a farmer has approval, a government official must come in person to uproot the entire tree. None of the tree should be wasted, particularly heartwood in the trunk and roots, since it holds the highest oil content. In the end, the tree's total oil output isn't much. So you may get around 60 grams of sandalwood oil out of one kg of root portion sandalwood. In case of stem, you may get around 40 grams to 50 grams. In branches, about 30 grams to 40 grams. To replenish some of its trees, the Karnataka state government created the Grow More Sandalwood program. Around 360 farmers are enrolled with our uh, Grow More Sandal project. And we are encouraging farmers to grow more, grow more and more sandalwood. And after minimum 14 years of age, we can buy back. But growing trees comes with the cost of protecting them for decades at a time, something that likely will still deter farmers. There are also the permissions growers need from the government, which slow down the process. It's uncertain if programs like this can return India to its old production levels, but at a minimum, the effort might help restore some of the country's lost sandalwood supply. Right now, these jasmine buds don't smell like anything. But once they bloom, producers in India process their coveted aroma into one of the priciest oils in the world. Just one kilogram of jasmine oil can cost over $5,000. It's a key ingredient in luxury perfumes. But to get one kilogram of some jasmine oil, these women need to pluck over 5,000 buds. So what does jasmine smell like? And why is the oil so expensive? For hundreds of years, jasmine has been used in India to make garlands and headpieces for special occasions. Its scent is sweet, fruity, and floral, blending well with other fragrances. And while India grows over 80 varieties of jasmine, jasmine grandiflorum and sambac are two of the most commercially valuable. It's been considered very divine. And sambac, especially even amongst other flowers, is considered one notch superior. It's the most preferred flower. Jasmine sambac has this ease, this friendliness, this happiness. It is a joyful scent. Jasmine sambac thrives in Madurai, the jasmine capital of India. Like any flower, jasmine produces a strong scent only after it blooms. But local sellers don't want jasmine flowers, they want the buds. That's because once the flower blooms, the scent only lasts a few days. The buds last longer, so they're easier to transport, whether it be for garlands or oil extraction. Raja runs a jasmine oil company, but before Raja can produce the oil, he'll need to wait for the day's harvest. Jasmine is a night-blooming flower. To maximize the harvest and ensure the buds make it to the markets in time, harvesters head to the fields early. Rati is one of a handful of women tasked with plucking the buds. It's not as simple as grabbing each bud she sees. Only the right bud blooms that day. Otherwise, it's not going to bloom. So if it doesn't bloom, no fragrance. 
Deciphering which buds to harvest requires a keen eye, one that Rati has trained over the last 10 years in these fields. Rati goes to each bush one by one, plucking thousands of buds before she collects a kilogram of jasmine. Gathering that much takes her about an hour. The work must be done gently by hand, so as not to damage the buds. Damage or wilted buds mean more work for Rati. Jasmine is a very laborious picking process. As a kilo of jasmine, just to give you a perspective, will have about 5,000 to 6,000 independent flowers. So to pick one kilo, they have to move 5,000 times. You know, the hand moves back and forth 5,000 times to pick just one kilo of flowers. But that's still a tiny fraction of the buds needed to produce a kilogram of oil. For one kilogram of jasmine oil, Raja needs one metric ton, or 1,000 kilograms of flowers. As she works, Rati collects the buds in her sari to protect them and preserve their fragrance. She'll harvest for about five hours straight. It's tedious and tiring, but it's critical for her to keep moving before it gets too hot. Then the buds head to the local market. Marugan is used to the market's chaotic energy. He's been sourcing jasmine for oil production for 18 years. Practically all corners of the market are full of buyers, bags of jasmine buds, and scales to determine the proper quantity for sale. The rate today is 500 rupees per kilogram. Before buying, he assesses the buds closely to determine if the size will be worth the price. When the sun has set, Raja's employees begin unloading bags full of jasmine buds back at the factory. The first step is to spread them out with rakes, and then again with their hands and feet. Spreading out the buds is crucial to preserving them. Leaving them in a big pile would generate heat, which would again cause them to wilt. Then Raja's team waits until the flowers begin to bloom. The minute it starts blooming, it starts emitting the fragrance. And then after some time, you can see emits a bad fragrance. So you know, there's a constant chemical reaction that's happening in the flower. For us, it's so important to capture the fragrance at the right moment, which is soon after it blooms, which is the best in terms of yield and the spell. Like several other white flowers, jasmine is rich in indole. Ironically, indole is found in feces too. In the case of feces, there's too much indole so it produces an unpleasant smell. But in limited amounts, it creates an appealing aroma, as it does with jasmine. When the jasmine has bloomed, Raja's team loads the flowers into four 5,000-liter extractors. The flowers then soak in a solvent. Once the solvent absorbs the smell of the flowers, they remove all of the liquid. They're left with this waxy, hard substance called concrete. It's what Raja uses to finally extract the oil. You add alcohol into the concretes, and then the concrete is separated off the waxes, it's filtered, and then we get the absolute. Jasmine Sambak is the most coveted of all jasmine flowers, hence the high price. At its peak, jasmine Sambak flowers can cost 10 times more than other types of jasmine. And when it comes to the final price of the oil, 
The majority of it depends on the cost of the flour itself. About 60%, the bulk of the cost, is attributed towards the flour cost itself. So it varies depending on the price of the flowers every year. The cost of one kilo of concrete is around $2,750 to $3,000. And the absolute is almost a double, like $5,500 plus per kilo of absolute. But jasmine sambak oil wasn't always this valuable. In fact, Raja says it was rarely harvested before the launch of Dior's Jador fragrance. That was when the sambak became the in thing. Before that, sambak was grown in India, but it was not really extracted. Today, jasmine oil extracts travel from India all the way to Paris, where they will be used in many high-end fragrances, particularly at Guerlain. Guerlain sources jasmine sambak oil directly from Raja. The signature of the house is made with jasmine and five other ingredients. So jasmine is almost everywhere. The company produces all of its fragrance blends in-house, including Mont Guerlain. Jasmine Sambac is the star of Mont Guerlain. You have the top note of lavender. Blend then in the Jasmine Sambac florals he enjoy. Then comes the sandalwood and the vanilla. This is such a soft and beautiful fragrance. <laughs> 